Okay, today we're going to talk about ex applications of exponents and working with formulas that have exponents. And two of the main formulas that have exponents um, are the simple interest formula and the compound interest formula. Now the simple interest formula is this one here. And it is used when interest is compounded once per year or once per compounding period. Okay? And the next one is the compound interest formula. And it is used when interest is compounded more than once per year. And so to really deal with these, you have to know what all these letters mean. Well, A is our ending amount. Okay? So our ending amount is equal to our P principal or beginning amount times 1 plus, and here's where we differ. Now, when you're only compounding interest once per compounding period, you can just add 1 to your interest rate. So if your interest rate is 4%, your R is equal to 0 0.04. Okay? And then T is just equal to the number of years. Now, if you compound interest more than one time per year, then you have to divide your interest rate by the number of times you compound, which is our n. So n is the number of times we compound in a year. Because you don't want to apply all 4% to every payment. You just want to apply it evenly to each payment. And so that's what this is really doing with the difference between these two formulas. So, let's begin with our simple interest formula and do some example problems. Remember, simple interest formula is A equals P times 1 plus R to the T power. So, if you look at your uh, question, you can determine what A, P, R, and T are. So here's our example. If you invested $1,000 in an account earning 8% per year, compounded annually, how much will the account contain after five years? So we have numbers here. We have 1,000, we have 8%, and we have five years. Now our beginning amount is the amount we invested, so P is equal to $1,000. R is going to be our interest rate, 8%, which is 0 0.08. And T, it's the number of years, which is 5. So A, our ending amount, will equal 1,000 plus 1 times 1 plus point. Sorry for that interruption. Uh, times 1 plus point zero 0.08 to the T power, which is 5. So you'll have our amount, ending amount, will equal 1,000 times 1 point zero 0.08 to the fifth power. And we'll talk about how to find that on your calculator, but 1.8 to the fifth power is going to be 1,000 times 1.469. So your ending amount will be $1,469.50. Okay, here's another example. If you invested 500 in an account earning 4% per year, how much will the account contain after five years? So here, this is our principal, our interest rate, and our time. So our, our ending amount is going to equal 500 times 1 plus 0 0.04 to the eighth power. So 500 times 1.04 to the eighth power times 500 should give you $684.28. Next we want to work some compound interest examples. These are where you are um, compounding them more than once a year. Remember that formula was A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the nt power. 
So one more thing to identify is our N. So $6,000, our principal, is deposited in an account paying 5%, which is our interest rate. Then what amount will be in the account? Oh, compounded quarterly means four times per year, so N equals four. Compounded monthly would be 12 times per year. Compounded weekly would be 52 times per year. Compounded daily would be 365 times per year. It's after 10 years is T. So A will equal 6,000 times 1 plus 0 0.05 over 4 to the N, which is 4, times 10 power. Okay, so that is 6,000 times... 0 0.05 divided by 4 is 0 0.0125, so 1.0125, and 4 times 10 is to the 40th power. And multiplying all that out should give you $9,861.72. So you can see you can make about hmm, almost four grand by uh, putting it into an account paying that much per year. Okay, next problem. 7,000 principal is deposited in an account paying 8% interest, your interest rate, compounded monthly, which means N is going to equal 12. How much will be in the account after five years? So T is five. So our amount will be 7,000 times 1 plus 0 0.08 over 12 to the 12 times 5 power. So 7,000 and 0 0.08 divided by 12 is 0 0.006, repeating. So that should be 1.00667 to the 60th power. And multiplying all that out should give you should give you $10,428.92. Sorry, my calculator was not doing what my hands asked to do. Okay, next. Okay, this is an example that I want you to do on your own. Suppose you decide to loan $1,000 to a person and decide to charge them 4% interest. Calculate the amount in the account after three years if the interest is compounded in the following ways. So you're going to do five different calculations with these numbers with N equal to 1 for compounded yearly, N equal to 4 for compounded quarterly, N equal to 12 for compounded monthly, N equal to 52 for compounded weekly, and N equal to 365 for compounded daily. And then write a little paragraph about which way you would choose to compound that interest after doing all those calculations and why. So we will talk about this in class. I'm not going to give you the answers here because I really want you to do this on your own and then see if you discover the principle I'm trying to uh, get across with this. And if not, well, you'll get it in class. See you, see you guys later.